People should expect the real me in this and probably the me that they've never gotten to know, certainly not in the past few years, um, where everything is through the lens of the media as opposed to, hey, it's me. I'm just excited to be myself and talk and be unfiltered and yeah, it's fun. So I don't ever remember personally feeling the negative connotation behind the word ambitious until I started dating my now husband. And um, <laughs> apparently ambition is a terrible, terrible thing for a woman, that is, according to some. This morning, I was saying to Harry, <laughs> I said, do you remember one of those? I'm the one for the record. I was about to say, <laughs> when they said, Harry's girl is straight out of Compton. And I was like, are they talking about Serena? <laughs> I'm not from, you know, I'm like, that's exactly, guy, you, know? you love a redhead. I'm like, I'm not from Compton. I've never lived in Compton. My mom doesn't live in Compton. But by the way, what's wrong with Compton? My girl Serena's from there. I know, like, wait a minute. That's Meghan Markle discussing the word ambition with the one and only Serena Williams on her newly launched podcast, Archetypes, on Spotify. Serena is her first guest on the premiere episode on August 23rd, 2022. In the audio you just heard, both women talk about the double standard women face in the public eye. In this episode, Megan recounts the first time she made a change by demanding the word women be changed to people in an ad she felt was sexist towards women. She also discusses how she became friends with Serena, their upbringing in Los Angeles, and how the media reported that Megan was from Compton. Serena added, Kevin Costner is from Compton. Yes, he is. Google it. He even talks about it. Isn't it fascinating? Megan also recounts a fire breaking out in her son Archie's room shortly after she and her husband were asked to honor a function during a tour in South Africa. Let's remember the son wasn't in the room. What did she expect? As a working royal, you are paid by the citizens to work. Whether they're sick or unable to attend, whatever it is, unless they're dying, the must and the ought to carry on their royal duties and that is what is expected of working royals which Meghan and Harry were at the time before the titles were stripped away from them. In a recent interview with The Cut, Meghan says there was the same celebration in South Africa when she married Prince Harry, similar to the celebration that was had when Nelson Mandela was released from prison. Okay, Megan, that may not be an appropriate comment to share publicly. This may have been a conversation that was shared with her that was not meant to be shared with the world. Yes, there were celebrations around the world when she tied the knot with the prince. But comparing the celebration to the one of Nelson Mandela is outrageous. Her marriage was done out of a free will. Mandela was sent to prison against his will. She cannot compare herself to Mandela. No, Megan, this is outrageous. Nelson Mandela's son came out slamming her claims and, as expected, said there can be a comparison between the release of his father and Megan's wedding. The first episode of the podcast is not as bad as the media outlets are making it sound. The main issue most media had about Megan's discussion with Serena is the comparison she drew between herself and Serena. Honestly, it was not that deep. We think what she was doing with drawing the comparisons was basically saying the both were at a young age making changes or at least attempting changes in their own ways. Serena was being a renowned athlete and a confident one for that matter 
and Megan was being an activist. That's all. In the second episode of Archetypes, Megan sits down with Mariah Carey. Let's hear an excerpt. It's a shame that that is the climate in this world to focus that much on that or that that would be discriminatory in that sense. But I think, you know, at the end of the day, I'm really just proud of who I am and where I come from. And we have never put any focus on that. We've just mm -hmm. focused on who we are as a couple. In episode two, Megan talks about being biracial. Megan says, and we quote, if there's any time in my life that it's been more focused on my race, it's only once I started dating my husband. Then I started to understand what it was like to be treated like a black woman. Because up until then, I had been treated like a mixed woman. And things really shifted. End quote. This very statement made a lot of media talk. Of course, Megan knew what racism is and understands it through the eyes of her mom. In her case, from what we got from the podcast, she did recognize that she benefited from being light-skinned while living in California. However, she's felt more racism when she married into the royal family. We feel she did not understand the depth of her union to the family until she was in it. The royal family is all about castes and God only knows what else. So obviously, we are sure Megan went through a full of series of questions and scrutiny more than she's ever used to while in the UK. And that's what she meant to express in episode two. As a matter of fact, she did do a PSA in 2012 where she addresses racism. So clearly by listening to it, one can tell she knows about the topic and understands it. She's just never experienced it in Los Angeles. I'm biracial. Most people can't tell what I'm mixed with. And so much of my life has felt like being a fly on the wall. And so some of the slurs that I've heard, the really offensive jokes, or the names, it's just hit me in a really strong way. You know, a couple years ago, I heard someone call my mom the N-word. So I think for me, beyond being personally affected by racism, just to see the, the landscape of what our country is like right now, certainly the world, and to want things to be better. Certain people don't look at me and see me as a black woman or a biracial woman they treat me differently, I think, than they would if they knew what I was mixed with. It just really opened my eyes to a mentality that still exists. You know, I thought that that was really isolated to those days that we were past, and sadly they're not. I am really proud of my heritage on both sides. I'm really proud of where I've come from and where I'm going. But yeah, I hope that by the time I have children, that people are even more open-minded to how things are changing and that having a mixed world is what it's all about. I mean, certainly it's, it makes it a lot more beautiful and a lot more interesting. Megan and Mariah also talk about the word diva. Among the tensed moments, we were able to get some light conversations as well, especially when Mariah called Megan out for having diva behaviors. It was hilarious and we love Mariah's realness. There might be this persona and yes, the diva mm -hmm. thing we can play into. I, I mean, it's not something that I connect to, but if for you, it's been a huge you part of your- You give us diva moments sometimes, I Megan. What kind Don't of diva even moments act do like, I give you? <laughs> Don't act <laughs> like you. It's, it's, right it's also the visual. It's the visual. A lot oh, of it's the, the visual. Because See, that's the thing. I associate this. it differently. I just kept thinking in that moment. Was my girl crush coming to a quick demise? She meant diva as a compliment, but I heard it as a dig. Finally, among all the criticism in the media, Bethany Frankel had something to say, and we thought, why not share that with you in this video? Check it out. When you leave the royal family, leave the royal family. It's behind you. You learned something, you said it, we heard you. 
You say thing, you say the same thing five times, five different ways. You're probably not changing the royal family. She's very much like a housewife in that she can't stop talking about the very thing that she wants to be irrelevant. I think that there's a non-relatable factor in the way that we're being spoken to and in that like poised, orchestrated elegance, in that mimicking of Diana, in that, you know, that Carolyn Bessick Kennedy intentional, very natural, very slow, intentional speech, being aghast at the word diva. Like, you know, who are you relating to? I, I just, so none of my friends relate to Meghan Markle. It's not the message. It's the messaging. That's what I think about Meghan Markle. On that, when you're on the Housewives, I want to separate from the housewives. It was toxic. I don't want to be part of the drama. Whatever the housewife says, right? Then you're in 96 interviews for the next five years, always talking about the very thing you're trying to extricate yourself from. You left the royal family, and in every single interview you do, you are talking in some nuanced subtext or slightly direct way about the royal family. Let it go, Elsa. Move forward. Create change in the future. And leave that family behind because it's only creating more drama for your husband. Anyway, tell us what you think about the episodes. Did you listen to them? What do you like or don't like about them? Let us know in the comment below. Thanks for tuning in our channel. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy our comments. And make sure you subscribe. We love you for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.